Dr. Smith, you know, when it comes to the screenings, I mean, we're talking about mammography here, but there's also some other options that are available, like the thermography. What what do you think of that? And because I did have that done, and I'll tell you my outcome as soon as I hear your answer. But is that um, as a form of a screening for the future? At at this point in time, we do not recommend it. In fact, thermography has been around for many many years, and it's been uh, there have been attempts to actually begin using it for breast cancer screening. In fact. Uh, Jay and I will both remember when, in fact, they were actually trying to screen right. uh, for breast cancer with thermography back in the uh, 70s. Uh, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that we have to base our recommendations for screening on the best available science. And frankly, if, as soon as there is a test for breast cancer that outperforms mammography, we will stop doing mammography and we will start doing that new test. Mm -hmm. As it stands right now, as attractive as thermography may be in terms of how it's promoted, no radiation, no compression, you know, a simple and a modern test, and in fact it's presently being combined, combined with diaphanography, sort of a hybrid thermography and light scanning, but frankly it does not measure up to our conventional tools. Tell the viewers exactly what the thermography is, just in case they have never seen or heard about it before. Right. Well, the images, of course, look very modern and pretty spectacular. And what thermography is essentially doing is imaging an area in the breast that is warmer than, than the adjacent tissue. And that increased uh, temperature is a function of what we understand to be the increased vascularity or blood flow. Uh, associated with with uh, with a cancer. In other words, the cancer cells tend to have higher metabolic rates. Uh, another way of putting it is they're hungry all the time. They tend to generate their own blood flow, their own food supply. And the principle of thermography is that we should be able to see those hot spots. Now, this is in fact the very same principle for magnetic resonant Im right. resonance imaging, but it's not heat. It's just that increased blood flow that we see through the uh, flow of a contrast agent into that part of the tumor. Mm -hmm. So we have good evidence for magnetic resonance imaging, and it's appropriate for women at very high risk. We do not have good evidence that thermography can replace our conventional tools. Now, Lisa, I need to jump in here for a second because Dr. Smith is really making a critically important point. Mm -hmm. The American Cancer Society, bless their hearts, are really rig rigorous when it comes to having scientific validation of things. And Bob has been one of the real leaders in this, Dr. Brawley, who we had on here a few weeks ago, another person. So people may be claiming all sorts of things, but show us the science mm -hmm. and show us the science that this technology is better than the next. Another example of an emerging technology is near-infrared laser imaging of the breast. Okay. It's been a lot of the works uh, not only done here at the Beckman Lab at University of California, Irvine, but at other major university centers around the country. Again, just as Bob said, this has got to be shown to be better than or whatever against uh, sort of the benchmark uh, right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.